Portland, Oregon. The city that's supposed to outleft all other cities in America with its progressive hubs of organic farmers markets and hemp as far as the eye can see and people of all sorts of identity spectrums living in harmony with one another doing yoga in a park. It's basically a nightmare for every Fox News watching, gun-toting, paranoid American that believes freedom is a pair of truck nuts and waving the American flag while disparaging minorities. But over the last few years, Portland has become a hotbed for some of the most tumultuous protests across the nation. Left and right-wing demonstrations have been met with violence, but the cops have primarily been involved in the left-wing protests. Now, recently, federal agents from the U.S. Marshals Special Operation Group and the Border Patrol Tactical Unit have been roving through the city in unmarked minivans, dressed like the military with no identification, abducting anyone they think is a Black Lives Matter activist or protester. There are a lot of confusing things about the situation. The first thing is the fact that Border Patrol is being deployed in Portland, Oregon? I, I mean, are we supposed to fear that the Canadians are coming down from their socialist paradise offering dangerous things like medicine to protesters, especially after they've been shot in the face by cops? And honestly, I do wish I was kind of exaggerating about protesters being shot in the face, but that's literally what happened on Thursday, July 16th. A Black Lives Matter protester was chanting and held a boombox over his head, and the cops used a rubber bullet and shot him in the face. Either the cop really hates John, the John Cusack classic Say Anything, or is 100% against Black Lives Mattering. Regardless, though, uh, the cop did get the White Supremacy Dragon Hood Award of 2020 because supremacists not only hate extra melanin, but also Hollywood liberal elites that can afford advanced technologies like boomboxes. Okay, the, the, the protester had to be rushed to a hospital and had to have reconstructive surgery. But... The use of the rubber bullet is justified because they are considered less than lethal. You know, in the game of Halo, when you run out of ammo, the less than lethal way of killing somebody is bludgeoning them in the face with the back of a shotgun. I mean, that's an acceptable form of killing another human being because it's not a lethal death. Basically, the rubber bullet is like Mel Gibson in Lethal Weapon 4 instead of Mel Gibson in Lethal Weapon 1. Lethal Weapon 4 was the least lethal of all of those films. And, and look, not a lot of people know this. Okay, this is insider information that you guys are about to get right now. Okay, but the original title of the fourth film was supposed to be Less Than Lethal Weapon. It was going to be a family film where an old anti-Semite blows a hole through just like a bunch of people using household objects, you know, like the less than lethal way of murdering people. Now, there are a few people who have described their interaction with these federal agents in unmarked minivans. One man said that this van pulls up, grabbed him, pulled a beanie over his eyes, and then took him to an undisclosed location. Where they actually took him was the federal courthouse to process him for the crime of wearing black at night. Okay, at this point, every goth in America should be pissed and should, and, and should take to the streets to combat this level of injustice and profiling. Can, can't fans of My Chemical Romance and Ozzy not walk the streets and feel safe anymore? Now, they rummaged through this man's belongings, they had him face walls and took his photo, disorienting him, and then they released him saying, this is a whole lot of nothing. I'd wager to disagree. I think this is a whole lot of authoritarian abuse. Lawyer Juan Chavez told Vice that this is stop and frisk 
meets Guantanamo Bay. Look, this is unconstitutional on various levels. Okay, this is like authoritarian catch and release. These unmarked, unidentified federal agents are arresting people on their own steroidal whims. They do not have just cause, aren't reading people their rights, and in some instances are giving men false expectations. Okay, when an unmarked minivan pulls up, there's a part of men's minds that is hoping it's a MILF and this is like a porn fantasy come true. Okay, when all that is taken away and it's, and it's, it's federal agents in, in camo kidnapping you, asking you for the location of Antifa, okay, that, that is going to lead to some very confusing boners. Okay, I mean, how are these people supposed to watch fantastic pieces of propaganda like American Sniper and Jack Ryan when that's going to elicit raging erections? This, uh, this is psychological and sexual warfare. Now, this is all coming as a result to Trump's, uh, of, of Trump's order to protect all statues of racist imperialists. But I'm sorry, that's my bad, federal monuments. Because what's more American than protecting property that looks like racist imperialists? But did it again, I'm so, I'm so sorry federal monuments and the trend of protecting inanimate objects over real human lives continues in the United States, right? The question is how something like this is even possible. How could it be that Trump can release federal agents to kidnap, maim, and assault average citizens in the streets? Part of it is uh, uh, the, the result of expanding uh, his authoritative powers by renewing the Patriot Act. Now, most Democrats uh, voted for this renewal of one of the most damaging and invasive pieces of legislation around. Now, remember, Democrat Nancy Pelosi said that the reauthorization of the Patriot Act was about strengthening our civil liberties by taking all of them away. Okay, I mean, if, if you don't have any, then the terrorists can't take them away which, from you, which makes you stronger in the long run. Okay, it's the same philosophy the Democrats have about the election. If we fuck with our own election, then how is some other country like, I don't know, let's say like, like Russia gonna do it, you know? And if they get their cans caught in the proverbial cookie jar again, they can just use like the Red Scare. And again, that lets them reauthorize the Patriot Act. You guys see, it's a full circle. It's a full circle. It's called the circle of fuckery. The circle of fuckery right there. Now, mix that with the fact that 10 Senate Democrats joined Mitch McConnell in expanding the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, or FISA, which basically allowed Attorney General William Barr and the FBI to conduct warrantless searches of people's web history. After 9-11, this was a tool that was used in tandem with the Patriot Act that was supposedly used to combat terrorism. But it just lets the intelligence community deem what is and isn't a threat to the country. You know, after 2016, the CIA basically said movements like Black Lives Matter are tools for Russian interference to sow divide in America. Because, you know, after like hundreds of years of slavery and lynchings and propping up racist imperialists. I'm keep doing it. I'm so sorry. Federal monuments and you know the continued murder of like minorities at the hands of law enforcement. Racism was solved when we got that one black president. So obviously these protests are Russian coups. These ideologies have let police departments deem certain protests and demonstrations unlawful, right? The Portland police deemed that the recent demonstration for the fight for black lives and the march for black education was unlawful. And just so we're clear, just so we're clear, according to the Portland police, saying black lives matter and educating people about black Americans' history is unlawful. It's 
it's kind of like they're saying all lives matter while systematically trying to take the lives of certain people. I mean, if you truly believe that all lives matter, then you'd put your guns down and march in solidarity. I, I, I don't know. I'm no, I'm no fashion expert, but does anybody out there know if camo comes in various shades of hypocrisy? Does that, does it come, does it come in any of those? I'm not, I'm not a fashionista, you know, but is there like a, is there like a hypocritical color of, of camo? I think it might just be all camo. All camo is the hypocritical color of camo. Now, all this is possible because of a history of authoritarian action, not just Trump's, right? Trump is the most vocal about being dictatorial. Most Democrats and Republicans have been quiet and they use propaganda and fear mongering to have us hand our rights over to them. Not only through the Patriot Act, which was introduced by baby boy Bush, but also the demonization of whistleblowers who reveal the paranoia of the United States government. Edward Snowden revealed that the NSA was collecting data and was constantly surveilling the American people. Under the Obama administration, his passport was revoked and he was stuck in Russia. If he had, was to come back to the United States, the Democrats have basically said that, they, that he wouldn't face a fair trial. And the proof of not facing a fair trial is in the treatment of Julian Assange. Assange not only revealed American war crimes, but has revealed the crimes of the elites all across the globe. Particularly, the Vault 7 leaks showed us that the CIA was using smart devices to spy into our homes. It's why the people put tape over their cameras on their computer, right? So, so Mike Pompeo and Gina Haspel can't spy on them masturbating, which is, that's a weird, it's a weird thing. You should, it's a, you should probably get consent before you do that, right? I mean, if, if the privacy issue is, is, is anything, it's, I mean, it's a consent, it's a consent problem, really, you know? Now, Assange, who was in the Ecuadorian embassy in the UK, was dragged out of there in 2019 and now is facing trial under the 109-year-old Espionage Act. He is purposefully treated terribly, and despite the UN Special Rapporteur on Torture saying that he is, in fact, being tortured, he remains in Belmarsh Prison unlawfully. And speaking of the Espionage Act, Democrat Woodrow Wilson put the Espionage Act in place to ensure that we'd have no opposing voices to entering World War I. This prevented criticizing the military, including their outfits, which makes me think, what did Woodrow Wilson want the American military to wear during World War I? Like, you know, capes? Maybe like a hat, like a weird, do you think it was like a weird hat, like a Viking hat, maybe. Like it was, it, uh, maybe it was cam, maybe it was a camo cape. Do you guys think it was a camo cape? I don't know. But after a 1918 speech in Canton, Ohio, socialist presidential candidate Eugene Debs was put into prison for speaking out against the war. Debs pointed out how the working class is cannon fodder for the rich and they don't get to be involved in treaties of the wars they fought in. Then, of course, you have Chelsea Manning, who was recently released from prison after the courts tried to coerce her to testify against Julian Assange. Manning's sentence was pardoned by Obama, but rather than rather than being pardoned, uh, she was she her her sentence was commuted. I, I, that that was a. I, muffled up the words. Uh, Manning's, <laughs> Manning's sentence wasn't pardoned by Obama, but she was commuted. Uh, her sentence was commuted by Obama, which meant that another president could have her put back in prison to complete her sentence. The Democratic president, Barack Obama, was no friend to anyone that stood up against the unlawful spying and war crimes of the United States. He punished whistleblowers for revealing the truth about the criminalities of the state. He, had he actually cared about whistleblowers, he would have fully pardoned Manning, Assange, and Snowden instead of half-heartedly commuting Manning's sentence. Okay, these federal agents, 
raiding Portland is also no different than ICE raids that have been happening for the better part of a decade. The, the only difference is now it's everybody's a target instead of just immigrants. And Trump didn't create authoritarianism in America. He's another pawn and a beneficiary in a long line of authoritarians that have been elected into power by complacency and propagandized fear-mongering. Now, the acting secretary of Homeland Security says that Portland has been under siege for 47 straight days by a violent mob. And that's true. The police and the federal agents have been terrorizing the peaceful protesters with banned chemical weapons since the start of the demonstrations. These state-sanctioned terrorist thugs are responsible for most of the violence we are seeing across the country. Now, the Portland police is actually barred from using tear gas, a weapon that's been uh, banned by the Geneva Conventions, but these unmarked, unidentified federal agents very much can't. Right? If the federal courts didn't want to see American citizens gassed by state-owned thugs, then they should have just banned the use of tear gas, period. Now, Customs and Border Patrol claims that the names are not presented on the agents' uniforms to protect the agents from doxing. You know, but... The agents will 100% dox all of the protesters and detain them without just cause. You know, you, 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 you give some, you get some. You know, that's just, a, that's just how balance works. That's equality. And really, if we think about it, isn't the roided up federal agent with combat training a full arsenal and literal body armor the ones that really need protecting? Aren't they... The, 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 the minority in this situation, aren't, aren't they the misunderstood ones? Aren't they the marginalized one in this situation? I mean, these protesters are out there and they're armed w with things like a, a, bot a bottled, bottled water, okay? And, and they're using like garbage can and, and grill lids as shields. Huh? These woke MacGyvers are scary and they need to be stopped. Okay, some of those chants are as infectious as COVID. So, you know, that's like fucking double reason to stop them. Now, both Democratic Oregon senators have talked about introducing legislation that would stop Trump from using federal agents against citizens, but we'll see where that goes, right? AOC and Eleanor Holmes are introducing bills that says that these federal agents will have to clearly identify who they are and what agency they belong to. And that's nice that these bills are being put into place, but where is the bill to defund the police or protect minorities from law enforcement brutality and ensure that the protesters' First Amendment rights are protected? Oh, and where's the, the bill that ensures that the wor like working class Americans have health care and their basic needs covered? Yeah, this is where all these bills fall short. And look, I know, I know some of you out there want me to have faith in the legislative process, but, but I don't. Look at it, the, the way this, this corporate product placement of Congress has acted during a pandemic. Pelosi denied Medicare for All and universal basic income during a health crisis and the largest unemployment we've seen in a decade. Rent and mortgages re remain uncancelled, and Cuomo wants to give billionaires in New York even bigger taxes. Biden is claiming that reforming the police would involve shooting a victim in the leg and maiming them. I mean, the Republicans weren't even going to get close to any kind of basic human rights because, well, they don't believe in those things. You know, because to them, because like God doesn't, like God doesn't say basic human rights rights are a thing like if you read the bible like the like god's like real kind of vague about like he's like oh fire and brimstone and the republicans are like yeah that's legislation i mean i honestly wouldn't be surprised that if this legislation passes it'll pass with the caveat of increasing the military budget and then all of us have to be escorted around on a daily basis by a u.s marshal who who, who properly identifies themselves wherever uh, we go now, people should be concerned about this, and there is no reason 100% of us should be against actions like this. There are 
ways to ensure the safety of protesters. And it's not going to come from the legislators, right? For once, don't protest alone, right? Be a pack, be many, be legion. From all the footage I've seen from Portland and all of the protests, what I see is a massive amount of solidarity. When someone gets injured or, or, or there's tear gas flung, people come together and take care of those that are brutalized. I, I experienced it myself when I attended one of the protests in my hometown of Pittsburgh. Um, I had a friend and myself fall to the ground and my friend got a, a, a little injured and immediately we had people coming over with bandages and water and, uh, and, and uh, you know, uh, pain relievers and uh, making sure that, that, that his wound was taken care of. And they don't do it for profit or glory. They do it because it's the right thing to do. And just recently, a crowd of 2,000 protesters in Portland pushed the federal agents back into the federal courthouse. Now, the federal ag agents retaliated by shooting less than lethal rounds at these protesters, which included a group of parents called Wall of Moms. Now, this is far a far, far better substitute for MILF fantasies. But Trump is apparently going to continue to play this escalation game by repeating this tactic in various other democratically controlled cities. But now that we know this tactic, we know how to push back, be heard, and win. Look, we aren't here because of Trump. We're here because the United States of America has a history of imprisoning and brutalizing anyone that goes against its war economy, foreign or abroad, or foreign or domestic. Foreign and abroad, that's the same thing, Krish. <laughs> foreign and domestic. This level of unconstitutional brutality has no party affiliation and is controlled by the highest religious order in the world, money. If you want an end to things like this, then it's time that we push back against a duopoly that has a bipartisanship in stripping rights from the American people. It's time for us to stop making excuses for charlatans like Obama because he had a D by his name. It's time for us to stop the siege against the American populace for revealing the ugliness of the American uh, upper class and win against these racist imperialists. No, you know what? I, I, I mean racist imperialists. And that has been your dispatch this week. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, I've got some pretty amazing uh, live virtual stand-up comedy shows coming up. Uh, if you're listening to this on the day this episode comes out on uh, July 24th. I'm going to be doing the virtual gas uh, hosted by Rob Green, who's been a guest on the podcast before. Uh, very excited to do that show. Super fun show. Very, very loose, relaxed, exciting show. Uh, and then next week, I'm going to be uh, doing a version of the Citizen Revolution on uh, for the, uh, the, the Providence Fringe Festival. Uh, July 30th and 31st at 6 p.m. That's a 100% donation-based show. You can get uh, tickets to see all of the shows. You can you can make a donation and and get 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 a pass to see all of the Fringe Festival shows, um, and uh, that gives you um, access to to uh, every single one of the show. My show particularly is going to be on Ju July 30th and July 31st at 6 p.m. If you want to be part of the live virtual audience, if you want to be in the Zoom showroom with me uh, and, and, and have your laughter heard and make sure that I don't die on the inside uh, by, by playing to an empty void. Uh, <laughs> uh, you can make a donation right on my website or on the Fringe website um, and let me know, you know, send me a message, shoot me an email, uh, direct message me on Twitter or Instagram or however you choose to communicate with me uh, and I will make sure that uh, you get the login information to attend the Citizen Revolution at Fringe PVD at the Providence Fringe Festival, July 30th and 31st at 6 p.m. I'm also going to be doing the No Thanks Virtual Comedy, hosted by my good friend Jimmy Calloway and Nicole Yates on August 8th at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific Time. 
super fun show. I got to check it out the other day. Very, very fun show uh, that I highly recommend people check out. Jimmy is going to be a guest on this show very soon. Uh, so very, very much recommend that you guys check that show out. And then in August, we're resuming uh, the regular run of the Citizen Revolution live virtual stand-up comedy shows where each week it's a brand new show, uh, brand new material, brand new subject matter, and a brand new uh, grassroots organization that we will be donating half the ticket sales to. Um, all of these ticket sales are, uh, all of the tickets and all of the details are available directly on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com. While you're there, you can check out my latest comedy album. You can check out all my past comedy albums, uh, which, by the way, are available for free on my Bandcamp page. Um, you can also become a sustaining member and, or make a one-time donation uh, sustaining members get free tickets to a lot of these shows. They uh, get uh, unreleased stand-up comedy and storytelling uh, sets and uh, bits and tracks. Uh, you get early access to the long, full, holistic episodes of Forkful of Noodles. You get a bunch of cool stuff by becoming a sustaining Member, uh, go to my website once again. That's uh, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K R I S H M O H A N H A H A dot com. It's a one stop shop for all things Krishmohan. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, 